Good people of YouTube, my name is Spanner, welcome back to Deathgate. We're in the Devil's Workshop, so we have to speak with the bartender and Hugh, so let's do it. Oh, I can attack Hugh. Let's not do that. What do you want? No, cancel that. I don't want to know. All I want is for you to get away from me. I've no time for all of you amateur cutthroats and gutter snipes. Leave me alone. Okay, he doesn't want to speak with us. Yes? How can I help you? I'm looking for some information. Information, eh? That doesn't come cheaply. Do you have any money? Nope. No, I don't. Is that a problem? No, not at all. I suddenly have no information to give you. Will there be anything else? Who's that guy over in the corner? That's you, the Hand, a member of the Brotherhood. He's been sitting at that table on and off for the last few weeks. I think he's scouting for prospective new members. A bunch of cutthroats have approached him about it, but he's turned all of them away. Some violently. I think he's looking for something special. Nice place you've got here. Thanks. I certainly hope you aren't being sarcastic. This is the only tavern in town, and I'm very proud of it. Give me a drink. Haven't we established that you are completely broke? Now, will there be anything else? Never mind. I'm not as thirsty as I thought. Very well. Stop back sometime. Okay, never mind. This... yeah. We didn't do anything. So, tavern... we can't go this way. But it looks like we can go this way, but we can't because we got drenched. And then we can go here, to that house. I'd like to know why we have to go into the house. Maybe we're looking for something valuable. The statue is the kind of lawn ornament that you'd expect from someone with a lot of money to burn. Then again, who else would have lawn ornaments in the first place? It's a combination manor and fortress. It suggests an owner who is both rich and paranoid. The windows are as open as they're going to get, which is to say, not at all. What about the door? The door is securely locked against people just like you. Okay, uh, now, oh, there's a lock. Nor naturally, the merchants who lives here bought nothing but the best lock he could find. This fits the bill. Oh, we can go further. Oh, no, we can't. This is to go inside the house. Hmm. Can I speak with the guy here again? Can you teach me how to pick locks? Hello again. What do you need now? Nope. All right, that's all I need. I'm ready to go. Very well. In yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's not the first lock that I'd like to pick. Can I give you back the doll? Tell you what. You keep the doll and we'll call it even. All right? Okay. Thin iron bar... I'd really like to go here. Hmm. We can try to unlock it. We'll unlock with... Okay, I'm not exactly sure what to do here now. Although it may not be obvious, these windows have bars in them, sturdy metal bars, the kind that say, just try and get through me. Needless to say, you can't. Okay, this kinda sucks. Put the house on the statue. 
Yeah. Not gonna work. So, hmm. We learned a new spell called Motion. Not sure how that would help. Can I use magic on the statues? Motion? I don't think this will work, but... It's in a pedestal, too high off of the ground for the spell to take effect. Could I cast motion on the door? This spell can only be cast upon things with at least a basic human... Okay, it's not gonna work. As long as the target object is touching the ground, the spell forces it to walk, usually in random directions. If the object is not suited for such activity, such as it has no movable joints, serious damage may result. These are humanoids, but they're too high off the ground. I can't even get near the tower. The electric zinger has no power. I don't suppose I can go back. Yeah, I can't go back to the... Um to the dwarves. So what we need to do here... Well, we need... We can't go back, so all that we need is available here. Could I give you this book? Hey, I collect everything. And even I don't want that. No. Can I give you a shear? Hey, I collect. Can I give you the pry bar? I'm not sure what to do now. And there's nowhere else to go, so unless I missed something obvious... I can't speak with Hugh. I don't have any money for the bartender. Maybe if I give something to the bartender, maybe the doll? Sorry, not valuable enough to buy. Hmm... Zinger? Sorry, not valuable. Would you like this book? Sorry, not valuable. Really? Would you like a jar of marmalade? Sorry, no. Would you like this marker? Sorry, not. Would you like a pipe? Sorry. Some shears? Sorry, no. Maybe a cork. Sorry. Okay, we can't make money this way. Well, let's try something. Let's attack you. This dowdy little man doesn't look so tough. You lunge forward, intent on killing the assassin with a quick swipe of your rusty shear, but you find that that's more than a little difficult with six inches of tempered steel lodged in your kidney. Yeah. So, not really sure what to do. Maybe I'll have to use some magic. 
Swap, Shroud of Darkness, Reality Pocket, Rune Transfer, Heat Cold and Identify. Can I cast Identify on the book? I doubt it will work. Yeah, it's not magical. Can I identify the doll? I don't think it's that useful, but we'll see. A spell of motion has been placed upon the doll. This makes it walk, providing that it is in contact with the ground. Uh, what if I use the doll on the window? Hmm. Drop the doll. It ambles around a bit and then returns to your feet. You pick the doll back up again. What fun. Could I send the doll? Hmm. I wanted to use the doll to explore this area for me. Oh, I can travel like this, nice. So we need to get into the house. And we've established that casting heat on the lock does not work. Yeah, I think I need to go and figure this out. Okay, first time I had to use a walkthrough for this. But apparently, I have neglected this chest down here. We can use the pry bar to unlock this chest. You fling open the strong box lids to reveal a sack of gems and the T pipe fitting. Oh, we have the missing pipe. A burlap sack holds a collection of cut and uncut gems, possibly stolen from the dwarves. So, we have a bunch of valuables. Is this valuable enough to sell now? I've got something that I want to sell. I'd be happy to take a look at it. Let me see. These are dwarven relics. Where did you steal these? Uh. They'd be worth more if there wasn't a glut of dwarven artifacts right now. He scans the room, as if challenging anyone to call him a liar. I'm a little short of funds just now. This is all I can afford for them. He begins to stack coins onto the bar. As he does so, all eyes in the room are on you, including those of the dark figure in the corner who has been studying the entire exchange. As you pocket the money, the dark figure motions you over. Well, that's a very impressive haul. Dwarven relics, eh? Even I would have a tough time coming by something that rare. Yeah, this, uh, hmm. Yeah, I figured I was probably missing something. I just wouldn't go into that house for no reason. I didn't really know what what... I thought I was going there to try and steal something, but... No one told me that. Well, I didn't steal them from the dwarves, just the elves that were transporting them. Those elves never come anywhere near Skurvash. You must have stolen them on Drevlin, or in the teeth of the Tribus Empire. Either is an amazing feat. 
Let me introduce myself. My name is Hugh the Hand. I represent the Brotherhood, and I'm currently recruiting new members. I'm impressed by your style. Would you be interested in joining? Wait a second. There's quite a difference between robbery and murder. Yes, but they do tend to go hand in hand. I'd be surprised if you were able to lift those artifacts without causing a few deaths. Why are you called Hugh the Hand? Because of my rank in the Brotherhood. An initiate starts out as the sheath. Later he becomes the tip, the blade, the cross piece, the hilt, and eventually the hand. Only one rank is higher than mine, and that is the arm. Chang currently holds that position, and she has held it for many, many years. What exactly is the Brotherhood? Simply put, the Brotherhood is a guild of assassins. We accept only the most talented killers from every nation. When governments cannot eliminate a target, they come to us. For an incredibly outrageous fee, they receive our assurance that the target will die. The Brotherhood recruits from both races and operates in all of the realms in times of war and peace. It's hard to say when we're busier. The contracts we enter into during peaceful times are equally numerous, though more covert. Wait, so they go to all the realms? When they say realms, do they mean the Fire Realm, the Water Realm, the Earth Realm and all of that? Then does that mean they know the rune words to go there? Hmm. If you accept only the most talented assassins, why do you want me? Aren't I unproven? That's very true. I did not say that I was inviting you to join. That comes later. I only asked you if you were interested. Are you? Yeah, sure. Of course I'm interested. What low-life cutthroat wouldn't be? Very good. Now you are still very unproven. The theft of the Dwarven artifacts was enough to draw my eye, but you're not blooded. I'm going to require a contract before I can apprentice you. Who's the target? There is a merchant who lives on the edge ah, of town. Ah, I see. He has angered the Brotherhood. He's overstepped his authority and must be eliminated in order to set an example for the rest of his kind. Do you understand? Okay, so now we go to the house. Do you have any information about this man? Certainly. Most importantly, you should know that he wears an amulet. It is magic and protects him from all harm. Also, you should know that he knows that the Brotherhood is out to eliminate him. We've already tried once unsuccessfully. Since then, he's taken some precautions. He's had the front door reinforced and the lock changed as well. We believe that he's currently holed up there in the house. A magic amulet that protects him from harm? Won't that make killing him rather difficult? Yes. The fact that he is never without it might hamper you as well. Consider this a true test of your skills. If he lives in such a fortress, how do you expect me to get inside? Isn't that what you do? Break in. I'm sure you've had more difficult jobs than this. Anything else I should know about this merchant? There are rumors that he keeps a secret journal. I'm not sure how that would help you since I'm asking you to kill him, not investigate him. All right, let's get on with this. Very well. Will there be anything else before you leave? Where can I find him? His house is not hard to find. It is the most expensive house in town. Follow the road to the southeast. You'll come across it soon. What should I do after I finish the job? I will require proof that you have eliminated him. Since he's said that he would die before being separated from his amulet, I believe that that will suffice. When you have finished, bring the amulet here to me. That should be enough. This sounds pretty serious. Why haven't you taken care of him before? Why ask me? We sent a man out. He didn't come back. If you succeed, then you have earned a place in the Brotherhood. If you fail, then we haven't lost another man. It is as simple as that. All right, I'm on the job. Very good. Remember, when you have finished, bring back his amulet. That will be proof enough of his death. Please, 
Don't insult me by running away. It would be such a bother to track you down and kill you. Flashing an evil smile, he leans back into shadow. Okay, so we have money. The pile includes coins of both elven and human origin. You figured that the barkeep didn't make this kind of money tending bar. So let's go into the alley. We have money now. So we can give it to him With this for money, some information. The items we need. Before you can say a word, the street rat grabs your pile of cash and runs out. Okay, what items do we need? Oh, can I wait? I got Aha! Him. The information and the lockpick. Ah, the lockpick, yes. I was wondering how I would get um, inside the house. Tell me about this lockpick. Tell me about this lockpick. It's custom. There's never been another made like it. Look at it. The lockpick has been designed to open any type of lock, no matter how complex. Only one of the prongs will fit into each lock. Once you've placed that prong inside the keyhole, you'll be able to move it certain ways. Each movement will make a specific sound. According to the locksmith, the lockpick will make a distinct sequence of three noises before the lock springs. He didn't tell me what that series of sounds was, but he said it would be the same for every lock. Hmm... This sounds a bit complicated. Well, let's see how it plays out. Tell me about the information. I bought it from an ex-member of the Brotherhood. He claims that this parchment contains the codes to open the tower's treasure room. There's no way to verify it without actually getting inside the tower, so I had to buy it at face value. I don't really understand it anyway. I have no idea what the first line, buy their time to die, means. The second line is a list of continents above Skurvash that partially obscure the sun throughout the month. We can't see which one it is at this time of day because the sun is behind the tower. Overall, I don't know how to use this information, but it might come in handy. Oh yeah, the um, unlocking the vault depends on the time of the month, I believe, from the book we read. How much did it all cost? As I suspected, it cost everything I had. Sorry there's no change. What can you tell me about the wealthy merchant on the edge of town? He was the most prominent and successful merchant in town until a couple of weeks ago. Then he just dropped out of sight. Rumor had it that he had a run-in with the Brotherhood. Maybe it had something to do with the stiff taxes the Brotherhood places on any transaction in Skurvash. I always thought that he'd be safe from the Brotherhood. He has a magic amulet that keeps him from harm, and he's never without it. That's about all I know, except I heard that he keeps a journal hidden away inside his house. I hope that helps, although I can't imagine how. Good work. Expensive, but good. I'll take it from here. Thank you. I think you'll find that in the long run, it will be worth far more than what you paid. Okay, here's the lockpick and the paper. Let's read the paper. There are two lines on the text on the inside. The first reads, buy their time to die. The second line reads, Sharthia, Hestia, Shagra, Uilandia, Aristagon. Hmm. A puzzle. Well, I'll have no idea what it means until I actually see the lock. Uh, so, how do I get out of here? Yeah, ah, here we go. And let's cast Identify on the lockpick. Maybe it will um, tell us how it works a little better. Well, for the most part, it operates mechanically, the lockpick does employ a touch of magic. It creates a series... Series of what? With a series of three sounds when opening a lock, a lock, the same three sounds regardless of the lock being picked. Okay, I'm not sure if that is uh, 
how useful that is. I don't know if it just opens the lock automatically or if I have to do something. Either way, we'll find it out next time. For now, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed some more Deathgate, and as usual, don't miss the next episode, because I won't. I will see you all next time.